Why do I think biology is worth studying? Well, biology is the future. <laughs> if, no, very seriously, everything that we are going to do in the 21st century depends upon biology. Um, if you think about population growth, if you think about food supplies for that increasing population, the only way that we're going to address that is through biological solutions. If you think about living longer, if you think about uh, diseases, the only way that we're going to solve those uh, is biology. So, biology is, is the science of the 21st century. Uh, biology is worth studying because it's probably why I think it's one of the most fascinating subjects on the planet. Um, it's a ge very general science qualification in some ways, so you're qualified for a whole variety of things, anything from going into a research career, going to teaching, people come from accountants, all sorts of things. It's a good general degree that gives you the foundations in everything and allows you to specialise. Um, I did a degree in, in, in biology and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Global warming, um, population growth, they're all basically going to be solved by biology and biologists and I think it would be very good if there was a lot more biologists just in politics um, and in the media as well. Well I think lots of things are worth studying but I think in, in a nutshell at least for me biology is, is the most fun thing to study. Um, now fun sounds a bit frivolous but I think the splendid thing about studying any science is that if there's any area of hu human endeavour that to my mind makes progress. Well, there are two. One is science and the other is technology. And a lot of technolog technological progress is based on science anyway. So let's get absolutely nail it. Science is really interesting. And I think amongst the sciences, biology is really a, a, an extraordinarily exciting state in its development because basically we're beginning to see how the parts fit together. And you can work at lots of different levels in biology but and then relate those different levels to one another. So in, in fact, I'd say that this is a golden age in biology and it's just a great time to be a biologist. Well, basically a biology degree is a very, very good training because you get a lot of transferable skills. I mean, if we go back to those arts graduates versus science graduates kind, kind of debate, um, then a biology degree is giving you the basic skills, written skills, communication skills and so on, but you're also going to be adept at statistics, data handling, doing spreadsheets, um, teamwork, all, all sorts of stuff. And of course those skills are all required in lots of different jobs. So a biology um, graduate actually to a prospective employer does represent you know, a good package of skills I would say. Um, of course everybody just wants to be on the telly <laughs> and we have got our graduates, Nigel Marvin is one of our graduates and Charlotte Uhlenbrook are two who are regularly on the telly. Well one of the nice things about biology is they do qualify you for all sorts of things in life so thinking of what um, people here have gone on to do, they really have gone on to do, a, a large chunk of them do stay in biology and go on um, down the PhD route. But they do everything from teacher training, accountancy, going into conservation issues. Some go on for, for further training in other subjects. So if now and again we get someone that goes on to do a, another degree in medical, um, um, human medicine or veterinary medicine. Um, so it really is a, it's, it's, it's a good qualification for doing everything, go to industry, um, all sorts of things. My view is if you're coming to study biology at Bristol, then you're, you're coming to a very good university which is extremely important. Um, I think I, my best advice would be be open-minded. You know, it may be that you like particular areas of biology because you had a good A-level biology teacher who liked a particular area, but be prepared to change because the kind of things that we're going to teach you here, some of them will blow your mind. So change. Oh, I think never to lose sight of the fact that you, know, you do your best work when you're really enjoying it. Um, and in a way, I mean, I think to make any progress you have to work pretty jolly hard, but I think if you're enjoying it, the hard work sort of, hard aspects of it sort of disappear into the background and you actually enjoy making discoveries and, and making some sort of progress. Two things, okay, one to do with work, one to do with, with life. Um, the work one, I'd advise people to start working from year one, okay, the people that I see do well, I can generally predict who they are by year one. So if you work hard all the way through, you're much more likely to come out with a, you know, with a, with a really good degree as opposed to just a good degree. 
So don't think you can kind of, um, you know, have a lot of fun for the first You should have a lot of fun, but you do need to work hard all the way through. So go in with attitude and think things, uh, things, things will all be rosy. Uh, second bit of advice is choose to live somewhere where you want to live for three years. Um, it is important you're happy where you're living, as well as doing a degree, you're also having you know, it's a three year chunk of, of, of your life. And um, I really enjoyed living in the city where I was doing my degree. Um, but I can certainly say that Bristol's one of the nicest places I've lived in the UK. I've lived in probably a dozen different places over the years, and Bristol's the one I like the most. So you've got a fabulous city on the doorstep. As a biologist, it's amazing. You've got the, the Avon Gorge going through with endemic plant species in it, so you don't have to go to kind of Madagascar or Mauritius or something. Right here in Bristol, we've got species you find nowhere else but in Bristol. So it's really good for all the things that a big city should provide. It's a very beautiful city, and it's a really good place to be a biologist. Oh, I think I was always a biologist. I, I was just really interested in natural history as a kid, but um, I always asked questions about the things I, that I was finding. And I think that sort of interest in the natural world, plus the sort of curiosity to try to understand things, is kind of what got me into it. I mean, I, I've never done anything professionally in this area, but when I was a kid, I just loved dipping into ponds and finding what was living in them and looking at microorganisms under a microscope or keeping an aquarium. Um, the other thing, this might sound quite politically incorrect these days, but I, I loved fishing when I was a kid and I still do a, a tiny bit of fishing. And when you're fishing, you try and understand where you're going to be able to find the fish and how to catch them. And in a way, oddly enough, I think it's, and you also have to have enormous patience, <laughs> particularly when you start because you're rubbish at it and you know the fish are few and far between and so I think having a lot of patience and trying to think about how organisms think about their natural environment um, is that, uh, in, and also you know doing field work in the sense that fishing is, is rather similar to field work and trying to be successful um, yeah a lot of the, my background is in, in the, those sorts of things oh that's a very interesting Originally I wanted to be an electrician, but I was quite blind. Yeah. So therefore I couldn't be an electrician, so I wanted to be a vet. And then I couldn't be a vet because the school that I went to um, didn't do all the three sciences in A level. Yeah. Um, and so I could only do two sciences, which meant really I was just left in biology. And my original idea was to go and do medicine after biology, but I loved biology so much. Thank you so still much. Brilliant. Um, I, I was collecting caterpillars as a five-year-old and I've just never stopped. So I was kind of born with an interest in insects, I think. And family holidays, camping holidays in Ireland and things like that. I just started collecting insects. And it was always insects, actually. I was never really a bird person. I like birds and mammals and I work on them a bit. But it was bugs that really got me interested. And I've been lucky enough to be able to, well, I'm still doing it a long time later. Um, probably the, well, one of my postdocs, the first postdoc I did, so the bit of work you do after doing a PhD before um, getting a permanent position, um, I was sent out to, to, to the tropics, out to Costa Rica in a tropical dry forest, to put, and the instructions were to put together the first quantitative um, plant leaf miner parasitoid food web. And I was living in a tent under a big fig tree in a national park, and I managed to do that, and it was the first one, and it's led on to, I'm still doing some of the same sort of work now, but applying those techniques I learned and developed um, to, to big environmental questions. It was a really hard thing to do. It was. It was. It sounds glamorous living in the tropics in a tent, but doing it for six months a year is really hard. But it worked. Yeah, I think what I. One of the things I. I don't want to single out anything in particular. I don't think. But earlier in my career, I. I, I was studying systems that other people had studied before me, and so I was building on that foundation. And then, um, about ten or fifteen years ago, I decided that. There were questions that I wanted to answer from scratch, and therefore I found a species of ant that no one had ever worked on before. And so almost everything we know about it is derived from the work of myself and my students, with master's students and PhD students and the whole lab. And to take something from scratch and work it up into what I think is now regarded as quite a, a good model of collective decision making, in other words, how ant colonies as a whole are able to decide between alternatives. You know, to have done that from scratch, I, I'm quite pleased with that. Yeah. Well, I think it's the research that we're doing right now. Um, so at the moment, we're working with the weed breeders to do molecular markers. Uh, we've recently published the weed genome sequence. Um, 
I think um, obviously some reading is good and um, one of the books that is good at the moment is Nick Lane's um, Life Ascending is, is a very good sort of overview of current um, thoughts on a lot of things like the origin of life and so on. Um, well, as I said earlier, be open-minded and read as much as you can about a variety of subjects in biology. Be prepared to also study some areas that you don't think are particularly attractive. So a lot of people come to Bristol because they're interested in mammalian conservation, for instance. But be prepared to study genetics because mammalian conservation is all about genetics. So you may, you know, you may have to do some things which originally you thought you didn't want to do. Uh, read generally, okay. So one of the things I always recommend you to do is, is, is read general magazine, well, general journals, not magazines. So I read scientific journals. But if you read new scientists, read around your subject. Find out what interests you, because what interests you is going to be what you do really, really well. So are you an ecologist or a, you lean more towards biochemistry, molecular biology, find something that really grabs your attention because that will be the bit that will uh, kind of, you know, you'll, you'll probably do best at and have the most fun at. So you've got to find what it is that really kind of interests you. That's a very good question. How would you prepare? I, I, I mean, I think what one ought to do before coming to university is, is goof off to the extent that um, civilised society allows you so to do and sort of and get part of that out of your system so that when you come to university you can actually at least focus quite a bit of your time on studying hard and working hard. And I know that sounds kind of grim, but, but actually, if you, if, as I said earlier, if you recognize that you know, making progress in biology is actually a great deal of fun, it seems a lot like, less like hard work. And I think it's extremely rewarding because I think the special thing about biology is if you work hard at it and you're meticulous and careful, almost anyone that's reasonably bright can make some significant progress in biology. I think, maybe I mythologize this, but I think in mathematics and physics, I think you have to be fantastically clever to really make progress. But I think there's so much biology out there that um, if you, you know, you can ask questions about things that nobody's even looked at before. And so I think it's possible for almost every one of us to make progress in biology. And that's just fantastic. I mean, if you publish a scientific paper, um, you know, you've got some claim to real originality in the whole of human history. And that's kind of really rather satisfying, I think. It's a great reason to be a biologist.